Hey, oh, welcome everyone to Today in the Scene by Indie Arcade Wave. I'm Joe, your host. Here on In the Scene, we dive into what's happening in the arcade space. From new indie arcade experiences, developers, arcade owners and operators, and news just within the space. We're here to answer the question, is the arcade dead? Spoiler, the answer is no, it's definitely not. I'm a part of the team that brought Galactic Battleground to the arcade space in 2017. Now we're diving into this week's episode. So joining us this week is someone who's very passionate about the arcade space. He's been working on a new arcade system that will make the arcade more accessible to more people and reintroduce the feeling of the arcade cabinet to a younger generation. I'm talking about Game Changers Arcade. This awesome setup is built and shown off, uh, showing off the arcade space, but it's also done with like a modernized, tw modernized twist. So it feels like a candy cab, but there's a lot more going on with it and a lot more games that can be played on it. Uh, with us this week is one of the creators, Maurice Barry. How you doing, man? How are you? How's I'm going? great. I'm great. I'm, gl I'm glad you're on here. I'm glad to talk about this. I've been following you on TikTok for a little while now, and I think your system is really cool. Um, obviously, the way that it introduces to a younger generation, which is a great goal, but I, I love the modular factor of it, where you can like pull the, the fight sticks right off and play with them. And I even saw you had like a driving wheel on it, so you can play different yeah. games. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really cool. But let's just jump in and let you introduce yourself. Who is Maurice Berry? Sure. So my name is Maurice Berry. Um, I have been with Game Changers Arcades. Well, actually... It was my idea. I, I founded it or whatever, me and my partner. I do have a partner. And um, we came together. I thought of the idea around about like 2017. Um, it started off with me just wanting an arcade. Um, and it just was just like, okay, I'm going to put something cool in my basement and, you know, just kind of create my ambiance. Um, really quickly, I learned that, you know, I have a really narrow basement door. So I couldn't fit a traditional arcade down into my basement door um, on top of the fact that it was so heavy. And so uh, I took the time, you know, and thought, well, it must be one that can fold, right? If, if it can fold, then I'm sure that, you know. And um, I went and looked, a Google search high and low, it didn't exist. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna build one myself quickly realized how hard that was. And so then I went to my, who was now my, my partner, but was also my best friend, one of my best friends. And I came to him and I said, hey, look, you, know, you think you could build this? And he was just like, yeah, that's kind of going to be impossible. Wait, I think I just figured it out. And it literally happened just like I just said it. And that's exactly what he did. So uh, we got in the garage and like anything, we sucked at it at first, It you know, and then here we are now, we built our first unit in 2018. We got it actually fully built, our first prototype. We call it the Zero. And then uh, we looked at it and we knew it just couldn't be hidden away in my basement. It, that's something special and that we need to, you know, get it out into the world or whatever. And then my personal story with arcades in general, how I started in arcades and where I come from with the arcades or whatever, that, that, uh, really made it personal to me and it really created a mission when we actually created the first zero unit. And uh, 2018, we built that one. And uh, 2019, we got back, actually six months later, six months later, we got back in the, in the garage again and we got at it and uh, we started the plans to build what we call the zero one. And that's the one that the world knows. That's the one that, uh, you were just talking about with the RK6 coming out, et cetera, et cetera. There it is. That's how it, that's how it started. That's where it's just started moving from there. Yeah, I, I love that. I love how it was like, a, I want this. It doesn't exist. Let's make it, bring it to a bunch of people and kind of reintroduce the idea of like, I don't know why nobody's thought of the modular function for a cabinet like that so you can mm -hmm. fold it down and get it through doors because that was one of the first things we dealt with with Galactic Battleground is we had our big ass cabinet that didn't fit through standard doors. We were like, all right, we got to shrink this. Otherwise, we're never going to be able to sell it to anybody. Um, so where has Game Changers taken you? Like we know it's obviously it's like a modular system. You can play a whole bunch of different games on it, whether it be classic arcades, fighting games, driving games, a whole bunch of stuff. 
Where has it taken you and what conventions or showcases really stick out that you remember? So I am from the fighting game community. I'm from the FGC. That's that's the heart of it. Me and my partner both. I'm both just, you know, grassroots FGC guys. And so when when we built when we got all the ideas and everything, obviously it started with trying to get it through a door. And then it was like, well, you know, how could we make this convenient for fighting game players? Because we're both fighting game players. So how could we make this convenient for us? And so um, that's we put all those same things into the zero, but it was still sort of a stand up cabinet. It was dual screen. It was like, you know, it, it was cool. It had good ideas. It had some good things to it, but it was like it's still not exactly the it's missing something. And so we ended up um, a, little, a, a little bit of story or whatever. I, I decided to I showed it off to a couple people. And then uh, it led me to a gentleman by the name of Kevin Fair. They said, you need to meet this guy by the name of Kevin Fair. And I was like, OK, you know, I kind of knew who he was already. We had met before, but we hadn't seen each other in years. And so I went very, very specifically to the um, in 2018, I went to C2E2 and I specifically went there with the mission of meeting him. I didn't even care about the Comic-Con at all. I'm like, I just want to, my mission is to meet this guy, show him this picture, show him the, the video of what it is that we are, of the zero, what we've done and create, you know, and, sh and see what he thinks about it. And so he, uh, I did just that. He looked at it, he's like, yeah, that's cool, man. That's pretty cool, whatever, you know? And he was just like, I was like, so I can tell you kind of have a little bit of a, you know, a issue with it. Like what exactly is your, he said, well, you got dual screens, he was like, well, you know, for me, it's like if you got two screens, I think it should be two different games going on. You know, it kind of would make sense if it was just one screen. And I was like, OK. And so I take I don't I'm not sensitive like at all. So I take if it's a non-constructive criticism then I just whatever, I just brush it off like it doesn't bother me at all. And if it's constructive criticism, I take it in and I internalize it and then I go and put it out to the world. Um, in, in a, you know, in a positive way, I make it a positive thing. And so uh, we went, that's how we end up going back to the drawing board and we made the zero one. And once we made the zero one, uh, we actually showed, you know, showed that model. The first person we showed it to was Kevin Fair. Uh, shout out to Kevin Fair, by the way, he, he owns a company called I Play Games. Uh, and so we actually showed showed the model to him first. We showed it to him and he seen, he said, that's it. That's the one right there. Like that is it, that is it. And so everything that we put into that unit was all about being convenient um, for the fighting game community, for the, the, the user, so to speak, but also for the owner. So the screen being hidden away, uh, how it folded up, the fact that we had the USB ports, uh, you know, multi units USB ports, um, uh, even from the fact they were 3.0 instead of 2.0, you name it, um, the amount of space that we put in it, everything was so we could do multiple systems and we can give the convenience to the owner to be able to have that flexibility to do what they need to do while giving the player all of the very familiar freedom. We said that we wanted it to appeal to the casual eye. So someone who doesn't know about arcades, never played arcades, never had an experience with arcades. But then we wanted to have someone who, like us, who's from the FGC, who's very familiar with everything that's there to sit down at it and feel right at home. And then we wanted the third person who said, well, I don't care really about arcades. I don't care about fighting games. I don't care about nothing. I just like video games. And this is a video game. I want to play it. And we want to be able to give them the option and the freedom to be able to sit down at it and feel right at home as well. So it became multi-use. So it was something that we we sat down and thought about and said, hey, you know, here's how we can make this happen and, and put it out into the world and see how they receive it. And uh, Kevin Fair was actually our, uh, he, he, he was the person who actually came aboard after he he was the first, him and his brother was the first people to ever play on the Zero One besides us. 
And then they came down and played on it. And after that, he said, look, I'll tell you what, I'm, you guys can bring this and you guys can come along with me or whatever. I do several different comic cons and shows and let's just see how people take to it. And that's how we got on our way. That's how we started. We went to about six or seven different comic cons. I love that. I love the idea of like, I feel like that's similar to kind of our story is like you meet somebody and they just help you like take your idea to the next level. And it's, it's so good as a gamer to find people that are developing systems, games, whatever it may be, that have the end user in mind, whether it be versatility or making it comfortable for like somebody in the FTC that feels that fight stick all the time. They have their own stick. They could potentially plug it into your system. You know, it doesn't have to be the stick that's there. So it, it just makes everybody feel comfortable with the system. And I love the one screen idea too, because like obviously if you're playing a fighting game, it, it feels more natural to have just one screen for both of you. And you took all that criticism in, you turned it around, and you turned it into a better product than you had before. Um, I see all over your TikTok account, and this one really stood out to me, was that you got cabinets into a school. Um, obviously, your mission is to bring a new uh, experience of the arcade to a younger generation that may not be able to experience it like you did in the past. So tell me how that happened and what your goal is really with putting these into, I believe it was a middle school or an elementary school. Yeah. So um, what you said was, it's true. That is our mission to bring our case to a new and a younger generation. But that's that's only half of the mission. Um, the, uh, the other half of the mission is to put our case back on every corner again, but for what that will look like today and moving forward. And so uh, obviously what that looked like, I'm, I'm by the way, I'm, I'm 39 for all of those who just, I'm an old man. So, you know, I'm 39. The, it was arcades on every corner when I was growing up. It didn't matter what laundromat, you know, the corner store, the, uh, you know, the restaurants, little greasy spoon, mom and pop shop, restaurants, whatever. It was an arcade. It was arcades in everywhere when I was growing up. So, um, that's what I mean by arcades being on every corner. And that was something that was very, you know, it was, it was, it was embedded in my culture. I knew it was just like, Hey, this was a normal thing. And we always had something to do. And so, um, you know, for us, we were like, well, what would that look like today? Right. And we had to take into account what everything is today, what the culture is today, the internet, et cetera, the violence, the you name it. I'm from Chicago. We are in Chicago. I mean, you know, I, our city is very special and, and it's great in so many ways. I hate that we are always recognized and brought up when we're talking about violence and not about the fact that we're the art capital of the country. And, and you know, we have all this beautiful architecture and just, you know, the buildings. And if you want to come here and make it, you can. And there's so many great things to do here, the shopping experience, et cetera. But we're always known for violence. And so um, with that being said, it was like, hey, you know, what would that look like if we were to put our case back on every corner? How, how, what, what does that look like? How do we do it? And where should we start? And schools came to mind. We said, well, it's got to be safe. It doesn't, let's put them in a school. You know, this makes a, a, a young kid who didn't have an arcade experience like we had, this will be their first arcade experience. This will be their safest arcade experience on top of the fact that this is going to make them want to spend more time in school. The longer you're around your teachers, the longer you're around the security guards, the longer you're around your deans and principals and et cetera, you start to develop a relationship with them. Not to mention arcades bring people together. That is the essence of them all. It doesn't matter who's making the arcade. It doesn't matter who's opening the arcade. It doesn't matter what game is on the screen of the arcade. It's going to bring people together. And so uh, arcades will are like what we consider to be the, the great equalizer, so to speak. And, and so what we mean by that is that you could take the most, the biggest, strongest, most popular athlete of a school. Right. And then you can take the most socially awkward, most shy, smallest, you know, even say girl who on normal circumstances, they probably would never actually speak to each other. But because of an arcade, they will both sit down because they have a mutual 
uh, uh, interest. They share a mutual interest in what's on the screen and they will sit down and play and they will have a good time. Then it will turn into a social interaction afterwards because that's how, that's what in the fighting game community, that's how the, the, the community grew. It didn't matter if you was from the corner, you sold drugs or whatever you did. And it didn't matter if you was like the nerdiest kid or whatever who watched anime secretly at the time, watched anime and didn't want nobody to know. The fact that y'all both like playing Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or X-Men versus Street Fighter, whatever it was games you were playing, it brought y'all together and y'all mutually were able to have dialogue back and forth with one another because of y'all both shared what was an interest on what was on the screen. And so we thought, look, putting them in schools will create a better social environment. Uh, we understand that video games in general creates a uh, better hand and eye coordination. Uh, there's been studies and show that, you know, within the science and the, and the psychology that you know, people who play video games long term have, you know, better hand and eye coordination. Uh, they think faster. They, you know, actually uh, a new study just came out and this wasn't at the time, but a new study just came out showing that people who play video games actually show a bit of a higher IQ score than people who don't play video games, um, you know, but it's also creates a, 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 uh, a goal oriented uh, sort of thought process, you know, for us, it was like getting the high score for today. It would be like, you know, I lost, but I can do this. I can beat this. I can beat this. So it teach you how to overcome, um, uh, obje you know, objectives or, or uh, things that are against you. So we thought that was, those are all the things that kids need in schools. And so we were like, hey, you know, it was a tough sale, but the first school that actually went and, and took it, it just, it was like, yeah, you're right. We need more of these. And then other schools start coming along after that. Yeah, there's so much to unwrap from what you just said. It was all like such a good point. Um, I mean, just different people like the fighting game community it's to me i think it's one of the most diverse communities that you really find like you go there and you're you're right i mean you find dudes that are like six five completely ripped sitting next to like a little five foot four <laughs> dude who's like right. super socially awkward right. and they're just having a good right. time chatting bullshit and like mm -hmm. oh dude nice move like teach me how to do that like it it's so mm -hmm. community driven and oriented and it it just you don't get that anymore with console gaming. If you're not shoulder to shoulder and you're not talking to each other and there's no camaraderie there, like it just, it's so interpersonal that you need to be next to that person to really get their reaction and build that experience. And I mean, I, I don't think it could have been some better. I think you said it perfectly. And I mean, I guess that, that kind of ties me into like one of the last things I wanted to ask you about is what you're doing right now. So you've got, the cabinets at a mall. I don't know exactly which mall it was, but you got a in a mall near Chicago or in Chicago and you're showing them off for like a whole month. How has that been going and what are you learning? What kind of criticism are you getting? What changes might you make to the next version? Like what are you learning from that experience? So we're in a uh, Stratford Square Mall. It's in Bloomingdale, Illinois. It, it is a suburb of Chicago. Uh, where it's in Bloomingdale, Illinois. And Essentially, we've decided that, hey, look, you know, let's try to expand our business. What we do is we, we build them, we manufacture them, we build them ourselves, and we sell them to businesses so they can monetize them and do what they want to do with them typically. But as of recently, we say, well, you know, let's take a try at it and see, you know, kind of what that will look like if we had an arcade. And uh, so we, we, we took three units. And we set them up in an open space, uh, sort of like a vending type of, you know, but like directly in the middle of the mall, um, right where the food court is and kind of where everyone is coming in and out at and uh, where the most traffic is. And we said, OK, let's set them up like right there and let's just see, you know, how people take to them. And we set up a pricing um, uh, a model and, and things like that and just, you know, just kind of see how people take to them and see how, you know, how they interact with them and, 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 and what, are the, what is the feedback and what can we do different and how could we even take all the data that we collect and then even be able to give it to our customers who say, hey, look, we need, you know, we were looking for a particular thing. If your product does this, then, you know, this is something. And so uh, that's how we kind of got started. That's how we got into the mall. And 
we haven't had any negative feedback. I'm going to be honest with you. And that scares me. And, and I mean that in the most humble way. Uh, it actually scares me because it's hard for those who are in creative spaces understand it is really hard to make something better when you don't have, when people aren't telling you what's wrong. You know, they're not telling you like, hey, look, this isn't, you know, this doesn't work for me. You're like, okay, good. Now, I'm not, what, what is it that will work for you? And then they tell you, and then you can go back and fix it and add that to it, or at least take a note of it. We're not getting that. So uh, it, it's kind of difficult. It really is. It's kind of difficult in that way. Um, and, and you know, some people would take that and just be like, yeah, you know, that's because we have the perfect product. And we, we, we don't. We have a good product. We know we do. Um, we knew that already. We knew, we know we have a good product, but we want to strive for perfection. And the only way to do that is to get the kind of feedback, the kind of negative, uh, criticism or positive criticism that we need in order to actually make the product better. And we're not actually getting that, um, we're, we're, we're getting, this thing is awesome. This is amazing. If, if our, this is what our caves are going to be, then this is what we want. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to come to an arcade, you got 15 year olds or whatever, who literally never had an arcade experience. It's just like, dude, I'm going to come here every day after school, you know, and it's like, okay, good. You know, and you have the, the mothers and daughters literally will sit down and play and they will have a good time. And it's like, so what do you guys think? They're like, no, this is amazing. Cool. Anything wrong? Anything we can change? No, leave it this way. Okay, so what we learned is, I know it's a, it was a, I, I can say this. We had two zero one units in there initially. With those two zero one units, 99.7% of our customer base were all male from ages five, literally up to 45. When we put in our newest prototype, which is we call it the mini changer, when we put that in, 33% of our customer base, or I should say our female customer jumped up 33.3%. And overall, 22% of our customer base is 22% like female. So, um, and then another 20% is like full family. And that means mom, dad, kid, you know, and then it breaks down into other percentages of just how many of them are like mom and son, mom and daughter, mom and, you know, dad. Like we've had that as well, just, you know, on a date, I guess, or just at the mall and then they stopped and played. And I mean, you know, I'm not, <laughs> please forgive me, but I'm sure they were in that 40, 45 range, you know, and they sat there and played. So uh, what we have learned is that is what our, we're fulfilling our mission, bringing our, our product is bringing, it brings people together um, of all ages. It's a, it appeals to all ages. And if there's a company or if there's companies out there or whatever, who was saying, we're trying to solve for how do we get more, impact on the female customers, um, you know, well, we kind of did it. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta, you gotta change it up. I'm sure what, what's the difference between your, your Z1, your zero one and your, your mini? Is it, is that the one that's more modular with like the steering wheel and stuff or? No. Uh, so the zero one is the one that you saw with the steering wheel on it. And it's right. the one that is the most popular one. The mini changer is smaller. Okay. The RK sticks don't come out. It still has the same fold. It can still let down and still be modular. Um, okay. But it kind of rolls like the suitcase, right? So if you wanted to, like, like you know how you pull, have a suitcase and you pull it in the airport? It's kind of like you could do the same thing with it, but it's smaller. And so the reaction to it is, oh my God, the little one is so cute. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just it also just takes the pressure off of like you look at a big arcade cabinet and it might it might be intimidating, you know, for somebody that doesn't play video games, somebody that's not one to just step up to something and try it. Having a mm -hmm. smaller unit is just psychologically less intimidating, really, is, is the difference mm -hmm. that I, I think might be there. But 
that's kind of everything I had for you, Maurice. Like, just just wrap up like what Game Changers is, what your mission is, and then give shout outs to social media and people that helped you along the way. So, uh, Game Changers Arcade, in its essence, is uh, literally a couple guys that came from rough neighborhoods, no secret there, and made arcades their life because arcades saved their life. And so, um, you know, for me on a very personal level, one side of the neighborhood didn't like the other side of the neighborhood. I would go into the arcade, dope boy be in there, you know, whatever. He like, yo, I'm for the take shorty up off the stick. He sat down, he played me, I beat him. Played me again, I beat him again. Kind of looked at me, walked out. I go to the other side of the neighborhood in very similar fashion. Uh, you know, same thing happened. Well, eventually they would see me coming and those guys would uh, start to bet on me. Hey, I bet you can't get shorty up off the stick. And I didn't even need quarters no more when I walked into the arcade. And so they would bet on me and I would play and I would win the money. And I would do this on both sides of the neighborhood. But they didn't even like each other. And they were willing to shoot and kill each other, go to jail, whatever. And so when they would beef, when they would go back and forth, they would turn around and uh, I would try to come to the arcade. And they'd be like, nah, shorty, don't come in here and mess with them sticks today. Go home. And they did this on both sides. And so, like I said earlier, they were willing to shoot and kill each other. But they, will, they wasn't willing to let that happen to me just because I was good at an arcade. So I tell that story because to understand what Game Changers Arcades is and what our, and why our mission is what it is, is because Arcades saved our life. It's just it's what it is. That's who we are. And we figure it did it for us. Well, it could do it for somebody else. Um, and that's, that's it in a nutshell. We're Game Changers Arcades across every social media platform. Um, you know, shout outs again to uh, Kevin Fair over at I Play Games. It, that's he is Kevin Fair at I Play Games or IPG. Um, shout outs to you for having me on. I appreciate it and giving me an opportunity to talk about my business and tell our story. And um, yeah, that's I guess that's about it. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. I love you sharing your story and letting the world know and from your story of like how it changed your life, how it saved your life. For me, it just sounds like fighting games just build respect. You know, it's, it's a good place for you to be with someone who is completely different from you and you have a mutual respect no matter who wins or loses. You step off, you respect each other, and that's that. That's all you, you know. It's just community at that point. Um, again, thank you for coming on. If you want to check out Game Changers Arcades, definitely do that. Check out their TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. I think those are the major ones you have. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want a cabinet, you can buy one from them too. So check that out. Um, but until next time, peace.